Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This is one episode you don't want to miss. We're going to talk about using something called net data. Now, if you've been using Docker or been following along in the series, this is one container you're going to want to have installed out of it. It's really going to let you see what's going on. And that's the tease. You're going to have to stay tuned for the rest of the video to see what I'm talking about. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that's not going to affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, we're first going to show you, I'm going to do it in reverse order. I'm going to show you what net data has the capability of doing, and I'm going to be transparent up front this is a base install there's other things you can do with this but i want to show you out of the box if you do absolutely nothing else what this is going to do and then i'm going to show you how to install net data trust me it's easy and there's one other thing i found to do that i'm going to show you how to, to fix the uh one setting we need to change in portainer but i want you to kind of get a sense for for what's going on so let's go over to our desktop and here we go sorry the, the switcher's acting up on me again so what we're going to do and i'm going to switch over here we're first going to show you what net data has the capability of doing and this is slick the main thing especially on a raspberry pi this is very important to know how hard that cpu is working if you're continually keeping it at 60 70 80 percent a it's going to get warm b it's probably going to start throttling on you if you don't have some sort of good ventilation such as the uh, the cage system from C4 Labs that you saw me use in a previous video. And I'll try to have that linked uh, somewhere up above here just for you to kind of see what's going on. Now, several things to look at here. The used amount of RAM. This is very important because you don't really want to oversubscribe. And oversubscribing, if that's not a term you're familiar with, it's using more data than you got. So you're going to have to swap stuff in and out. It's going to make things sluggish, may even make things a little questionable stability wise now if you look at disk read and write that's another one to watch because if you're running this totally off an sd card the more you write to the sd card and reading probably has some impact on too but writing is the is what's more changing on it then that's the more you write on it is the shorter lifespan it's going to have unless you have some of the ones that are really meant for intensive writing and and we'll i'm going to i've got a couple of those and we're going to show those in a future video now net inbound and outbound that's only a, a matters if you are communicating heavily and if heaven forbid this is on a raspberry raspberry pi 3b and i'm not criticizing that if you do you're really going to hit some ceilings with that because at best you know the raspberry pi b can only do 100 meg where by going up to the four you get a gig or at least a little more of a gig than what the earlier raspberry pis could be so there are a host of things that you can do. You can see down here on the side, let me take my ugly mug off the screen for a moment. This is just an indication of what you can do. We're on the system overview. You can really drill down into utilization. You can see what's going on a little more granular when you get into the disks and you really drills down. Uh, you can see what's going on. Let me drop my uh, lower third there. You can really get a chance for to see what it thinks is is going on. Now you're going to see some other pieces of the pie here, and these are simply containers. You can, and if you want to have the names of the containers there, that's a setting that you can go change. But at this point, I'm simply showing you what, and I've got to drop this for a moment just to see that. There we go. Uh, you can really make this as granular as you want to be. I want to show you out of the box, if you do nothing else, what it has the capability of doing. So this really is very easy to install, and I'm going to show you now exactly how easy it is. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to... 
go here and I've already got the command in place and oh, that's not what I wanted it to do but we'll go down here and do it this way and then we will just simply copy and then we will go over here now this is the target system that we're going to put this on and as you can see that's the two containers running watchtower which is another one you saw me do a video on that earlier again watchtower net data should be on it out of the get-go so that's going to help you really with some of the day-to-day -day stuff and keep tabs on what's going on and then of course our good old friend portainer so we'll paste that in as you can see it is going through and pulling everything down that it needs and depending on the speed of your connection that's only going to take just a few minutes to do if you've got somebody who is playing some uh, online games it's going to slow you down a little bit but again this takes no more than just a, a couple of minutes and it's going to extract it here pretty quick and i just want you i'm leaving this up for you to see in real time so that if you have any questions you know about how long it should take and what you can expect it to do and with that and then it's downloaded the newest image and there's the container id so i'm going to double check something here real quick and it's 10.1.209 okay so now we're going to go back over here and let's close this out and if we go over here to pertainer and drill down you'll see there's now three containers here watchtower is up and running now don't be concerned because there's no published ports because uh, I'm sorry, not Watchtower, but Net Data. This is the port you access it on, and it's it the way. If you dig into the script you saw me earlier, and I'll put that into the description. That is, it's read-only access. It's not going to change anything. It's simply looking and watching. So we've got this. So we're going to open up another tab here just to show you 10.0.1.209. And it's a, sometimes going to be a little sluggish when it first comes up. And, of course, it's going to take its sweet time. And this is where it, 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 don't worry if it doesn't come up right away. Because it is, let's refresh this. We should go, okay, now it's healthy. Okay, that's good. And see, it says it can't be reached. But it was still getting settled in. So, again, that's. T nineteen nine 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 nine. Don't have to, but let's go over and do HTTP colon colon. And oh, now really, portainer nineteen and four nines. Okay, ten dot one dot two oh nine. Ten dot one dot two oh nine. Okay. 10.0.1.209 colon 19999 and there you go it just had to want to come up we all know about technology so as you can see this you know we're we're just a few minutes in so this is going to take you know don't worry about when you first go in if you see the cpu suddenly spiked like 80 or 90 percent there's going to be peaks that that's just the nature of the business. So whether you're running this against an Intel-based installation, if you're running this, especially if you're running on the Raspberry Pis, I can see this being a very big help because you're noticing here, this one has less than 10% of the RAM in use. So you've got a lot more you can do with this one. And you're going to see there's occasionally some disk writing. It's using very little of the swap memory. CPU is just sitting there in coast so this is really something that is going to be well worth the time to do let me hit this little button here there we go it makes it look a little bit better this is going to be something that you really want to have in place because as you can see it is you know tells you a lot of information and it's well worth the time to put it in and I, I, you know, I just can't say enough about it between it and let's go over here and we're going to go back to Portainer. Oh, I did promise you one thing. I want to make sure we 
live up to that. So you can see right now, here's what I would call my base Docker install. This has NetData, Watchtower, which handles all the updates, Portainer, which makes the GUI administration a little bit easier. So now let's go into NetData and we will go down here. I don't see. Oh, there we go. Advanced mode. All right. And what we want to do is go down here to restart policies. And right now, see, it says none. So what's going to happen? And there's a way you can do this on the command line. But I wanted to show you a way where you can do this in Docker. And if you do some look around, you'll find a way where you can do it in the script. But you may not want this to automatically restart in the case of power loss. So all we do here under restart policies is I will just say unless stopped and click update and you can see by the little green message it just went away there then that's all set ready to go so when if and when something does happen let's go back here to portainer and we'll go up here to dashboard so three containers so it says healthy you know you're good to go there and everything is basically ready to uh take on your next big adventure so really net data is even if you do nothing else with it if you don't have it go down and, and resolve the container ids to an actual name and there's supposed to be a way you can do that i typically am not running that much on the raspberry pi so i haven't delved into that if you're interested in learning about that reach out to me i can i'll be happy to do a future video on that one so you've seen what can be done this really like i said whether you are doing a raspberry if i can get the button here with you doing a raspberry pi 4 or an intel NUC, really this is something that is well worth the couple of minutes it took to put it together and it will serve you well because that way if you think there's a problem you can very quickly spot what it thinks is going on i mean yes you can do the docker uh PS and there's Docker stats that will tell you something, but then that, that's commands you have to keep typing where this kind of gives you a, a running a total and, and, and summary of what's going on. So really, that's well worth, I think, the time and what little space that it does take to do it. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, and you probably are at this point, you're going to see videos on the screen that are the next steps to this one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.